One of the things I really appreciated early on with bookbinding is the fact that the cost of entry is pretty low, especially in comparison with all the other hobbies I've delved into. You could use plain old copy paper and a sewing needle and thread if you wanted. Is it going to yield the most optimal results? No, but it can get you started. My first book that I attempted, I pretty much used only material and tools that I already had from other hobbies. I was even able to trim the text block using some clamps, straight boards, and a chisel. But all that being said, it still is very nice to have specific tools for a specific purpose. So in this video, I build a book binding finishing press with the added functionality of being a book plow as well. From what I can tell, a finishing press in its most basic form is just two chunks of wood with some kind of threaded rod on either side of it for clamping. Another common aspect that I've seen is for the tops of the boards to be angled to some degree. For this one, I wanted to be able to flip it over as well and use a plow on the opposite side to trim a text block, so it's a tad bit more complicated than that. You can see I started with some scrap melamine that I already had. I sanded the side to be glued and then sandwiched some half inch MDF between them. On one side, I made sure that the MDF was not quite as tall as the melamine so that once glued, it would leave a channel in the middle. That channel will be used uh, for the plow attachment later. You might think that gluing melamine might not be a good idea because the surface is so smooth and the glue might not adhere, but in my infinite wisdom I left this piece to dry on top of some melamine that it was not supposed to be glued to, and it stuck quite well. I ended up grabbing a mallet, or as my brother likes to call it, the persuader, and in no time it was persuaded. This next part is a little sketchy, and I don't necessarily recommend that you try this, but it was the only thing I could think of at the time to get the desired result. You see, I didn't want the angle on the top of the press to run the entire length of the boards, even though that would have been ridiculously less complicated. But in order to be able to use the flip side of this press for the plow, I needed at least part of the angled side to be square so that the press could sit flat. So I put my table saw at 45 degrees and lowered the blade all the way down into the table. Then I clamped the board to the fence and positioned it in the right spot. At that point it was just a matter of raising the blade high enough to cut through the board. My more recent endeavors at making finishing presses have led me to using a giant chamfer bit on a router and it is much easier than my process here, but my process here was free, so there's that.
Once I had the rough shape cut out, I took it to my belt sander. This was the part I was most nervous about because it was completely freehand, but it worked out okay. If you look closely, you can see some discrepancies, but nothing big enough for me to scrap it. It helped that the radius of the belt was about the radius I wanted for the curve here. To cover up the nasty edges of the boards, I used some white oak veneer that was left over from another project. I've been trying to figure out what to use this on for a while. It's some pretty nice veneer. This seemed to be the perfect use. I wanted to make sure that it would follow the contour of the board, so I heated it up a little and kind of curved it by hand before putting adhesive on it. The contact cement that I used is this Weldwood brand. It's probably not particularly better than any other, but it's just what was at the store. I know barge is another one that people like to use. It's easy enough to use. You simply paint it to both surfaces that you're trying to adhere together and wait 15 minutes or so until it becomes tacky and then you press those two pieces together. You may have to do multiple coats of it depending on what you're putting it on. I did two here. cut the edges of the veneer, I just used a good old-fashioned chisel. I sharpened it a little bit first. You might be thinking that my left hand was in a precarious position a lot of the times when I cut this, and you're probably right. You should probably practice better safety than I do.
And this was when I tried to get my wife to take some awesome dynamic shots. I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to videography, and neither does she. Sort of a blind leading the blind sort of thing. So, uh, sorry about that. With the veneer done, I decided to get started on the plow. I've got a small collection of offcuts in quite a variety of fancy woods. No idea what most of them are, but my best guess for this chunk is pecan. The idea here is to cut a tongue on this block to go in the groove on the press. I also cut the corresponding block to be the same height as this block without the groove so they match. My drill press does a pretty good job of drilling accurate perpendicular holes, but just to be sure I taped both sides of the press together so that even if the hole was slightly off, at least the two boards would line up nicely. The total thickness of both boards was a little much for my drill press, so I drilled through the top board and just a bit into the second, then untaped and separated them and finished drilling through the second. If I was doing this again, I would have used some threaded inserts here instead of these T-nut things. They'd just be a bit more stable than these, I think. Or maybe just use epoxy or some other adhesive to adhere it to the press. These just seem like they could pop out pretty easily. I had to incorporate my laser somehow, so I cut these little handles out real quick and glued them together. I'm using 3 8 inch carriage bolts, which have a square section just below the head. So I cut one side of the handle hole square to accommodate that. The way I wanted this to work was for the bolt to go through the first board and spin freely. Then in the second board, it would go through the threads. This makes it so that when you turn the handle, the second board moves closer to the first board. The way I see a lot of people doing it is without any threaded insert and just throwing a wing nut on the end of the bolt and tightening that, which is also a viable option. Once I got the handle spinning as freely as I wanted, I used thread lock on the nuts, the non-permanent kind.
I didn't want to get any finish on the inside of the press, so I closed it up and spread this Odie's oil on it. Only on the veneer parts, of course. To finish out the plow part, I just needed to connect the two halves together. I drilled the holes the same way that I did the press, but this time I only needed one threaded part right in the middle while I drilled two outside holes for dowels that will stabilize it. For the blade, my initial thought was to use one of these cheap chisels from Harbor Freight. But then I came across this tiny plane, also from Harbor Freight, with a blade that was much thinner, and it was already the right size. In order to slice across paper, the blade needed to be rounded, so I took it to my sander and rounded it just a bit. I then put a bevel on one side. I sharpened it on this crappy stone until it was looking pretty decent. And here's another example of my phenomenal camera work as I drilled and countersunk these holes.
The test fit went well, so I glued the dowels on one side of the plow. The other side I left unglued as that side needs to be able to slide in and out as you adjust the opening of the plow. And after putting a coat of Odie's oil on the plow, I was ready to try it out. This was several days of work, just a little here and there as I had time, but the convenience that this provides is worth it. Do I need it to do the job? Nah. The chisel and boards worked well enough, but it's nice to have a specific tool for a specific job. Thank you for hanging around this long. I hope you found at least a little bit of value watching this video. Until next time.